Hi, everybody. Lee Honish. I am the former head loss mitigator for IndyMac Bank's HELOC division in 1988. I went into the business of doing default properties at the age of 18. I've been in the industry for over 30 plus years. 2010, I became one of the top marketers in America, working and focusing directly on distressed properties. If you'd like to find out more or watch one of my webinars, go to honish.io forward slash event. Click the link in the description. While you're here, hit the like button, click subscribe. There you go. Uh, today we're talking about Zillow in a little more detail. I know I did a video yesterday uh, to briefly go over it, but uh, I wanted to look at uh, a little bit more of the long-term effects. So from Monday when they posted the announcement, their stock actually had a significant drop from its high, right? They dropped 10%. Uh, now, two days later, they've almost completely recovered. Um, it's been a little bit rocky. It's probably going to plateau right through here. One of my coaching students just asked about buying shares. I would be more interested to see what's happening at the end of the week. I understand if it makes it all the way back up to the 10%, it drops, and it's an opportunity you missed out on. I'm just saying... It, 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 I understand four or five bucks a share is a big deal in the world of stockdom, but um, my answer to it is, is this a plateau? In which case you're buying in here and if the market goes the other direction, right? Does that affect you negatively? I mean, again, I don't give stock advice even remotely. I don't even really look at stock trends because I personally, from my perspective, uh, I don't think that stock prices have a huge effect on companies, except, uh, you know, BlackRock, Zillow. They're companies that are in real estate. And I'll tell you why this particular thing is interesting to me. Um, they've eliminated a funnel that if you look at their quarterly or yearly outlooks has generated depending on the properties and depending on the location, anywhere from five to 20% on the money that's invested, right? So that's a big deal. That is a huge deal, right? For every hundred dollars they invest, they're making on average somewhere between five and $10 per $100 of that transaction, five to $10 of that 100. Um, that's a huge deal when you're talking billions and billions of dollars. Now, the they've cut it off. No longer exists. In fact, I think the bigger issue I have with it is the rumors, and I'm not a rumor guy. And this certainly fall if you've never seen me before, there are things I know and things I think. Okay? I know what the market's going to do. I know there are more default opportunities for listing then expired, canceled, probates, divorce, etc. I know it. There are more opportunities coming up. I know for a fact that when that happens, real estate agents and investors are going to flock to distressed properties, just like they did in 2007. I know that in certain markets, there will be a correction and in certain markets, there will be uh, crashes. And I know for a fact, nationally, it will all be perceived as a crash. Got it? Those are the things I know. Now, here's something I think. I'm really concerned that a company that has been rumored on the web to be inflating prices, right? This is a long-standing thing about Zillow buying low, then raising the prices in markets to benefit themselves and generate more return on a consistent ATM-like basis on their money invested, right? They just suddenly stopped that. Now, you can Google Zillow stops buying and you can go through the several hundred stories that I've read. They are all based, all of them are based on a Zillow press release. So here's my question, right? This is how I have to look at it as a critical thinker. Do I believe a Zillow press release or not, right? And in the Zillow press release, 
they're stating, right? And again, we're back into the think category, right? Well, let's go with no, right? Zillow stated, I have too much inventory. We don't have enough staff, yada, 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 yada. I don't want to go back to it, but we're talking about $2.7 billion in revenue and 6,500 employees. They don't have enough employees and they don't have enough money and they're just taking a break. We're just trying to calm it all down. It's okay. Just taking a break. Just taking a breather, right? This is a company that has been rumored to be increasing exponentially the value of properties. Suddenly stop buying. So let's break this down into parts. Who cares why they stopped buying? I can tell you what I think. I think they don't know what's going to happen. Just like when Wells stopped doing equity lines. They don't know what's going to happen. And that's why they did it. But I'll take their words at face value. It's based on employees. It's based on inventory. It's based on backlog. Whatever horse shit you want to believe on the topic, okay? As a banker, as somebody who has to scour this and determine what the value of property in the future is going to be. Why is that a benefit to you in the real estate industry, right? If you're an agent or an investor, it's a value to you because if the values are going to go lower, right, then you will have strategic defaults. You will have short sales. You will see more of a crash start sooner than if it just happened organically by the Fed raising the interest rate, which I know will happen right? Uh, these are things that I look at. So when people tell me that I'm fear mongering or that I don't know shit, which is kind of my favorite, right? It's impossible for prices not to come down and panic people trying to sell. 70% of the people up, 66%, by the way, I round up, 66% of the people out there say it's not the right time to buy. The interest rate going up will have an effect on it. I got bad news for you. If Zillow is artificially inflating the market, right, just hypothetically, and they no longer are buying for the next quarter, foreseeable quarter, right? We don't know what they're going to do January 3rd. Monday, January 3rd. We don't know. Let's just go with this quarter. Do you think that will have a positive impact on the value of property or a negative? You want another one? Third quarter, Goldman Sachs sold $16 billion worth of, ac of, of assets. That's not good. Why'd they sell off $16 billion worth of assets in the third quarter? Oh, because of COVID and employees, right? The company line. These guys all seem to use the same press release. It's kind of cool, actually. We're not going to know how bad everybody is currently bleeding to death, playing in an inflated stock market, in a hyperinflation economy, and in an incredible bubble in real estate. All three of these things are important, right? This is why guys like Michael Burry and all the quote unquote pundits on the internet are predicting an everything, everything bubble, because if one pops, they all pop. So why am I into it? Well, number one, I already know we've got approximately 2 million properties coming online in the next 365 days. Uh, one of my coaching students is showing the numbers in Vegas, which, by the way, is one of my projected crash markets, not correction, crash, yay. Uh, and he's shown a 400% increase week over week in the number of defaulted properties being noted on the market. That's not good, right? So we're seeing more filings, more people coming online. If you're an investor or a real estate agent, this is an opportunity. So it has to be mainstream media to get the rest of the agents and the rest of the investors to start getting involved in default properties. That's generally what it takes. That will happen here during the winter season 
Because do sales increase during the winter or do they decrease? They're raising the interest rate from 3-1 probably to about as high as 3-3 or 3-4 before the end of the year. Will that increase the likelihood that that 66% will buy or decrease? All of these things matter. You have to be a critical thinker and just look at the physical data. The question that was posed by my group is the significance of Zillow not buying. If Zillow is artificially inflating the market by buying neighborhoods or buying in bulk to a neighborhood, stabilizing it at one price to make their return, their 5%, and exponentially increasing the prices to increase their return on money invested, they're no longer doing it for at least one quarter. In the winter, when sales go down, in a market where 66% of the people say they're, it's not the right time to buy, in a market where we know for sure 2 million properties are coming online, as distress increasing supply. No, I'm sure everything will be fine. The market can absorb it all. It'd be great, right? If you look at these things that are for sure things happening, Zillow not buying is so significant that I'm surprised that this is, by the way, this is only internet and print media news. This is like a blogger's wet dream. I mean, the only people talking about it are basically online. And here's the mind boggling thing. It only takes up one page. It's not like the number two story on the nightly news. It's not the world news. It's not a big deal to them. And it's just a company doing something. Goldman Sachs selling $16 billion in assets in Q3. Not a big deal just the state of doing business. Their average net return is only 20 million, uh, 20 billion. You gotta start looking at these little things. People are eliminating high risk debt wells, right? I don't know what a meeting would look like right now inside of a bank, right? I personally, when the recommendation came to me, if I were sitting at the table based on everything that's happening, I would say to um, my executives, you need to cut down origination. You need to stop, you know, anything below an alt A loan. I would cut production. I would cut equity lines. I would do exactly what Wells did. That would be my recommendation to my CEO and CFO. It would be. Wouldn't be a question. I would do exactly what Wells did. And then Chase and B of A followed suit. Or I'd increase the guidelines so dramatically and I'd only make it a percentage of the equity. People are averaging $51,500 in equity on their homes right now. That equity was created, again, in theory, based on what people are documenting about the market one of those forces was Zillow and Zillow's no longer buying and doing that routine for the next quarter, which means they're going to be selling off assets to increase their money on hand. Why are they doing that? Why are you increasing? You know, you're just basically cashing out. I'll, I'll tell you what I think you guys should be watching. I would watch uh, BlackRock like a hawk. And I'd look at those Q3, Q4 numbers and see if they're selling off assets quietly. I would. Again, do I think any one of these things will cause a crash? Yes, actually I do. I think any of these will cause a... Uh, the market will perceive a crash by any price adjustment in the market. Got it? I'm going to say it again. Okay. Homeowners and a great number of real estate agents are dumb as shit, okay? If they see a five or a 10 or a 15% market correction, my opinion, that's no big deal. We've hit a plateau. Perhaps we can spike back up, okay? However, five, 10, 15% to those that don't know, 
or possibly believe that the president is secretly a robot while he's tied up in the basement. Um, and that this is all some grand conspiratorial plan of keeping control over us, or that we're secretly getting vaccines that are killing us. I'm going to make it clear. Government wants you alive and paying taxes. The banks want you alive and paying your taxes. Death is the worst thing in the banking world, by the way, FYI. They want you alive. They'll do everything to keep you alive. So my point to all of this, you got to, I get it. You don't trust any of them. I get it. You shouldn't. But why do you trust selective data? Look at all the data, especially the Zillow thing. Start watching Black Rod. Start looking. Nobody's talking about Evergrande anymore. They're now talking about the impact of Evergrande having an effect on the entire global market as it crashes to the ground, right? They're doing everything they can to bail water out of that thing. There's a lot of forces in play that are going to bring the prices down. So here's the question. You have a bunch of people who bought on this bubble. You do. How long is it before they see a decline in value and go, I don't want to pay it? Because if you haven't been around since 2006, or if you're like me, been around since two, uh, 1988, people who lose equity don't want to pay the payment on their home. It's called the strategic default. It's about as common as saying the word default, I guess. Um, couldn't think of anything really common there. These are contributing factors. We are at the beginning of a wave. Just imagine there's a wave going. It's a huge tsunami sized wave, right? At San Diego. You're right on the top of it. As one of our students, those that are actively students or those that are actively investors with us, you are investing for the luxury of me getting up every day at three, four, five in the morning and scouring these stories, right? And looking for the trends and where you want to be on your surfboard so that you can, I've said it, I've quoted it. I'll say it to everybody on this call. My goal is to make every single one of my students a million dollars, right? First thing we're going to do is take listings and deals at the top. When we get down to the bottom, we're going to work on investing and developing, right? With limited or no money out of pocket so that when the wave goes back up again, right? The rise always happens in real estate. This time you will take that opportunity. We include that this educational process. Zillow is probably the most dramatic thing going on right now, by far, by far. It will have an effect. It's winter that will have an effect. The Fed for sure tapering, you know, money, money printing in the interest rates and the lending rate on money going up will have an effect. Six and a half people out of 10 already say it's not the right time to buy. What more do I have to say? Do you think that number is going to go up or down? Oh, it's supply and demand, supply and demand, supply and demand. We're still at historic lows, yada, yada, yada. Whistle in the dark, asshole, to keep your spirits up. I mean, seriously. Now, you don't even have to be an expert, right? When I started this company six, seven months ago, Right. I had to beat people over the head with facts and stats and be a game every single day. I don't have to anymore. Waves are running on its own. So take advantage of it. For those of you that are coaching students, take it as a mo motivational cue. Right. Go and tag properties. For those of you that are trying out the new postcard system, put out the postcards. If you're wondering, yes, we're testing postcards. The face to face method. What are you guys doing? I mean, seriously, this the, fa the the actual, um, this one kind of makes me a little crazy. This should be used more often. So when you sign up, you have a library. Inside the library, there are three modules. The th uh, I want to talk about this because I just don't think it's going to be used as much as it should be. Uh, the third item is called the hub. For those of you that are watching this, all of these different things are marketing, right? Marketing, the 12-step program. Uh, the face-to-face -face method, we'll talk about it in a minute. Our coaching calls, we do three coaching calls a week for our students are cataloged, archived, get a free one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we have an iBuyer program, uh, an investor program, which somebody asked about. I'm just for my friend, Stephen, who's on the call, who 
Uh, actually, a couple of people were having surgeries and stuff. I'm glad that I put in some books and audio that were helpful to people. And, of course, our archives of all of our trainings, right? And, yes, there's a white label book thing as well. I'm talking about this. Why aren't you guys walking around with this face-to-face -face method? Why aren't you guys consistently telling people to open Google, type in home advocates, right? I got to use two hands for this. Why are you giving me a hard time? Good Lord. Good thing there was nothing questionable in my searches there. That would have been awkward. We're line one. Do you want to know how much persuasion power that has? Right? Hey, open it up. Scroll down. That's me on the front screen. You can call the 800 number. You can send me an email. It's instant credibility. I, I cannot stress the level of credibility you guys have in that situation. Uh, not to mention we give you the postcard template that you guys beat me over the head with with the actual testimonial that was given to the company, right? That you can put on the front of the card with a homeowner that got helped. And plenty of room for you to put whatever you want on the back with use of our flyers. This should be your daily mantra. I'm going to talk to five people. I'm going to find one person. And that's the number. Go talk to five people and find someone who's missed a payment or did a forbearance. Make a database, make an email list. Start thinking outside of the box. I'm working on getting you guys a CRM, a generic CRM that you can all use, but I keep adding costs to the program, right? Ultimately, I'm going to charge $10,000 for this program, right? Once the actual everything changes, I've already talked to Derek about it. I'm happy to announce it. We're going to charge $10,000 for this program once I do this next upgrade. Um, and the, the market perception turns. We're also going to be doing uh, next month a monthly payment program with just the tagging process and just the postcard process without providing leads, without providing the call center, without providing all the coaching calls. They'll get this Wednesday call that you're all on right now. And I'll charge two ninety seven a month and I'll sell that all day long. And those that can actually do math will see that $10,000 is actually cheaper in the long run. And the fact that Derek still has this program at nineteen ninety seven for people who are brand new and nine ninety seven for upgrades for students. The next upgrade price is 5000 It's actually on the site right now. If you go, if you were to just go on and click get started, we're listing it at 5000 So again, for those of you that are on the call, this is an opportunity. Take advantage of this Derek thing that makes me so mental that I don't even know what to say about it. I'm gonna answer questions from the students and people who've been on my webinar, people that are on my email list, that could be you, right? Show up, let us know, or send me an email and tell me you wanna be on this call and ask me questions live, whatever you want. Uh, call me directly. I will give you my personal email, lee at honish.io.